All right, so today, um, we, hold on. <coughs> Forget I have my music on. <laughs> it's on so much. Um, anyway, um, so today what I have here, um, I get a lot, probably a good majority of my horses are ones that, um, for lack of a better word, they're kind of like have anxiety, they're anxious. And most of the time it's due to, um, you know, people get on the horse and just go and do stuff. The horse might not have a full understanding of, of a foundation and how to do things. Um, so they just kind of think they have to get up and go. Um, sometimes people will be like, um, I don't know, they'll be a competitor or something like that. And all they do with the horse is get on and drill, 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 you know, fast 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 and the horse just thinks as soon as you get on that's what they're supposed to do they're just supposed to go somewhere um, so when, you, when and there's a, there's a list of reasons you know mile long as to what can cause this kind of stuff but what you want to be able to do is um, kind of when you get these horses is get them to really understand everything that you're asking them to do you know how to move a body part how to just wait for you which is a really big thing for these horses um, and it's really critical you'll see him um, his feet are pretty well out of balance right now so um, and he's a gated horse uh, so you'll see him moving a little bit funny at times just bear with it we're waiting for the farrier to come and hopefully fix those feet um, and there's just a few little things but uh, I've had him for about a week now and uh, yesterday I started just getting on the saddle and getting him to just, hey dude, chill out, just wait for me. Uh, it was really pretty interesting, so I thought it might be a good time to video this. Um, what I've done for the first week is a lot of groundwork. Uh, getting him kind of used to things, learning how to just kind of be a little bit more with me. You can see he's still a little bit more um, anxious than I like. You know, he's always kind of looking around, worrying about what's going on, kind of creeping in on me a little bit. Um, and he does that for security, um, but he's way better. I mean, the first time I took him out, it was, you know, quite a bit of length of time, and he probably pooped eight, ten times or something like that, just, you know, just not sure what to, <laughs> what's going on, and, and um, just kind of scared and not sure what to do next. So over time, it's just like, this is what I want you to do, this is how I want you to do it. Um, I just did a little bit of groundwork with him just now. You've guys seen my... Uh, groundwork videos a gazillion times you don't need to see it all but when I have horses that have a lot of anxiety a lot of go they've you know just drank way too much coffee in their lifetime um, I don't do a whole lot of just endless circles when you have a horse that's uh, has a lot going on circles just kind of increases that so you know just as a quick brief you know I'll do a lot of you know I'll send them here stop that disengage I'll do this in a progressive manner, meaning I'll like take him somewhere while I'm doing it, ask him to go kind of forward, yield, go the other way. I'll do a whole lot of like lateral work, whether or not it's perfect at this point is not my concern. I want him to be able to cross his feet um, and kind of yield away from me that way. Okay. And this way, not really sure how far my camera goes, so I'll try and be careful here. Alright, and what this video is going to be um, is hopefully, depending on the weather, the weather kind of screws me up a lot with making these videos because it's just me by myself, so I have to be careful. But hopefully we'll do a little bit of progression here so you can see what he's like today and then you'll see what he's like in about a week or so and, and you know, two weeks and so forth and so on. Um, I'll also do a lot of backing with these guys, trying to get them back straight, back circles, you know, right out, left back, right out, left back. Just starting to get him to where he's starting to talk, uh, where I can actually talk to those feet and kind of get him exactly kind of where I want him. Um, another thing I'll do with these guys, you know, I do a whole lot of, you know, just kind of flailing around here and Stepped on my cone, buddy. <laughs> my cones are getting old. Stayed in that shape. There we go. Um, kind of flail around. 
you know, I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm just, you know, waving to the coyotes or whatever uh, until he can just kind of stand there. He has to learn that just because I'm moving around doesn't mean I want him to do nothing. Maybe I just want him to stand there, but I just, you know, I'm trying to get the flies off of him. There's a wasp or something. There isn't, but, um, you know, whatever I got to do there, I'm just trying to get him to understand that it's okay. And believe it or not, this is good compared to what it was. You know, I'll pat him. I'll reach in here and do that. Just get kind of sloppy and move around here. And wait until he kind of calms down a little bit. Kind of help him stay there. Throw this up and down. You know, I'm not holding him in place. I might occasionally redirect him or something or make it a little hard for him to go. But I'm not doing anything that says making him stand there, which is a problem when you, when you get horses like this and you like tie them. It's one of the worst things you can do. You want to let him know that he can move his feet until he decides he doesn't have to anymore. If you prevent him from moving his feet, that's all he's going to want to do. And when he can't move his feet, he's going to start moving his mind. When his mind is totally blown, th then you got that, you know, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride kind of thing going on, and you just kind of have to pray and hope that you survive the experience. Some people might think that's fun, but it sure ain't fun for the horse. You know, they want their horse just go, 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 go. And I just got to wait here until he's better, otherwise I'm just going to have to deal with it later. <laughs> So that's why I'm still talking. Um, so, you know, your horse just shouldn't just go, 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 go. You should be able to stand there. You should be able to do stuff. You should be able to have lunch. You should be able to fix the fence, you know, with them tucked in your belt or something like that. You know, whatever you need to do. And just because I tap him doesn't mean that he has to, you know, move off. Because I'm not really asking him to move off. It's my body language. He'll know the difference when I want him to move one day. <laughs> I know, buddy. It's scary stuff, ain't it? So that's just anxiety, and that's what happens. You know, they get... They get worried about this stuff sometimes. And he did real good. He was getting this real good, and then I put the saddle on him. And then it kind of started all over again. And then I got in the saddle yesterday, and yeah, that was fun. Um, again, he's not dangerous. There's nothing, you know, where... You know, I wouldn't put a little kid on him, necessarily, but... Nothing horribly dangerous about this horse. He's not going to flip over on you or nothing like that. Um, but he, he's not thinking. And when they're not thinking and your life is in their brain and, and they can't use their brain, that's not for me. I don't need to, you know, entrust my life to something that, that ain't there and doesn't care about his own. Okay? So I just got to wait here for a little bit until this settles again. You know, when I was doing this in the, without the saddle on, he was better. As soon as I put that saddle on, it clicks different, different memories. You know, all of a sudden he thinks he needs to, but it took me a week. Well, at least five days, I should say, until he could settle without the saddle. Might help him there a little bit. Kind of hold him. Bring him in. Bring him in, bring him in. Now the whole time you're doing this, that rope is just there, but you gotta watch it. Don't wrap it around you, because if he gets really spooked, you know, you're gonna lose your arm. You're not gonna get it out. So while you're doing this, be aware of where your ropes are, where you are, where the saddle is. And I just gotta wait for him here. Otherwise, like I said, it'll be a bigger disaster when I get on. Pat him underneath his belly, move stuff around, little jingles. You know, if my music's playing again, which it usually is, you know, if a nice song comes on, I might be dancing to it, you know. <laughs> and, you know, that, nobody sees me. I guess people from the freeway could probably see me, but not for very long. But, you know, just do something that's moving you around. And one day, as if anybody that's used to any horses that I've worked with for any amount of time, they could care less when I'm doing this. They know when I'm talking to them and when I'm not. You know, if you're in the living room, you know, doing something, doing a chore, doing a project or something, and just because your family's running around the house doing other things, somebody's making dinner or 
doing this doesn't mean that it has of any effect on you and you know that but if they come up to you and start talking to you or asking you directly then you know it's for you but until then you know what they're doing isn't directed at you now if you're a mom you might have to fix what they're doing you might be aware of it and I want him aware of what I'm doing and I want to be aware of what he's doing but it's I know it's not directly related at me okay so that's better not perfect but it's better and every day you get this better again this is going to be a progression this isn't about I want to show you where he's at now so that you can see where he's hopefully going to get to all right he looks off there a little bit now one of my pet peeves I'll show you this real quick while we're here now I have that bridle up on my saddle horn here and I was moving around at the same time now I'll see people they'll have that bridle up there and they'll have like your your reins or whatever will be hanging down they can get their leg through there they won't have it tied on there or something like that I'll use my saddle strings and I'll tie that on there I'll put that so that if he starts bouncing around this might flop the chances of him getting stuck or that falling off and getting tangled in him is really minimal okay but you know like I said I see it all the time people throw that up there and they'll have this hanging down there oops too far okay and you know then I'm moving him around and he steps through that steps on that pulls that breaks my bridle gets hung up on it if he's not used to rope work yet he might get freaked out and now he's dragging everything and you know all over tarnation so you know when I do this I have these McCarty reins whatever you have I make sure it's neat I make sure it's ready okay everything's kind of tucked up in a good position and I put it over the horn and I pull it tight on that horn so that it's not just sloppy on the other side I'll take my saddle strings and you know if you want to get fancy you can make a fancy knot there I'm not that fancy most of the time I just tie it on there and now if he's moving around well you saw it it wasn't going anywhere and be real I mean yeah if he's bouncing around that much he's not gonna be saddled yet anyway you know he's not gonna get a hind foot up in there or you know anything else so all right enough of that now when I want to bridle a horse oftentimes when when they're anxious little critters like this okay he'll be like looking all over the place while I'm trying to bridle him now I can either keep the, the halter on and then take it off underneath the bridle later okay or I can just take it off and put it around his neck he's not usually too run away ish if he is well I guess I'll have to go catch him okay just kind of put this here stick that through there now bring this here now if my horse is really bad okay I won't put these reins over his head first because if he goes to bolt off you know then again he's taking the bridle with him he can get hung up so if if he's really touchy about it then I'll just leave this over my arm and work the bridle that way if he's not too horrendous you know then I'll do it this way accidents can still happen and it varies so I'm gonna bring his head over towards me put my hand up here hold this okay now I'm gonna ask him and he takes the bridle really pretty darn well the bridles not the problem that's the problem he always wants to see what else is happening I can also put my hand over on this side and use my thumb and my hand to keep bringing him over you got to make sure that you're not hitting his eyeball okay and every time he moves away I don't care what I'm in okay even if I'm halfway on I bring his head back I bring his head back I bring his head back and I bring his head back I want him paying attention to me I don't want him off in la la land and it took me about 20 minutes yesterday to put his to put this bridle on because all they want to do is keep looking away looking away okay if they're not telling you that they're with you yet don't get on don't even go any further until this is better I mean yeah it doesn't have to be perfect okay but you can see how he's always <laughs> wanting to look away one day when these horses start calming down hopefully in a week or so of doing this constantly he'll stay here with me okay I'm just trying to help him understand that he can stay here with me now yeah I could sit there and I can start whacking on him and stuff like that um, telling him that he needs to you know pay more attention to me and there'll be times where I might get a little bit more firm 
but as often as I can, I'm going to try and make it pleasant for him. If he really starts losing it, yeah, I'll kind of get a little bit firmer and I'll say, hey, buddy, you know, even that, even that, even that, every little bit, come back to me, buddy, stay with me. Okay, it's us. I don't care about the butterfly over there. I don't care about the horses up there. I don't care that, you know, last night there was a peccary on the uh, little javelina, the peccaries, those little pig things. I don't care if it was running around. And, you know, it's not there right now. Don't worry about it. I'm telling you, life is good. I'll let him get his curiosity out. I mean, we were out here for a while. He can get his curiosity look, realize nothing's there. But what he'll do, and a lot of these horses do, they'll look at it and then they fix on, fixate on it. The next thing you know, you know, they just get so lost in that that they can't think of anything else. Okay, so every day I'm just going to be doing this, and you'll see an improvement, hopefully, weather permitting, that I can do another video. Um, hopefully you'll see an improvement on this over time to where he'll stay here with me all the time. Okay, let me set this down so I don't get it in the way. Up there, he got a little stuck. So I'm going back up again. All right. There's going to push on me. I won't allow him to push on me either. Sometimes, you know, you'll be working these horses that are off in La La Land. Like I said, too much coffee, and they're they're going to want to like look away from you. And when they look away from you, then they lean on you at the same time. You know, they kind of do this thing. They they. They, they look away from you and then they lean on you. No, that's not it. Pay attention to where I'm at all the time. Know I'm here, not just because you're leaning on me. Don't lean on me, okay? All right, so he's done all this. Let me pull away a little bit from the cones because I know where, where this is going to possibly be going. All right. Put my McCarty in my belt there. Check my cinch. Make sure life's good. He's all right with the back cinch, but um, I don't think he's used to it being too tight, so a little bit aware of that. Move him around anytime. I don't care. If he was my best horse, if I adjust any of these cinches, he takes a couple steps. You know, especially if it's not my best horse, they'll definitely take a couple steps. Sometimes that different feel can just all of a sudden just feel funny. And if they're one of these horses that they're always like, la 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 you know and not paying attention and all of a sudden you change something and then they step off and it feels funny Whew. so so if you um have that and they um you cinch that up and then you step on them before you move them out first then you got to ride it i'd rather be on the ground all right put my seat belt on now when I get on a horse, I don't want my horse to go anywhere, okay? So y'all have seen me do this a bunch of times on other videos too on my colt starting. I'm going to rock him, make sure he's kind of okay. Hello. Bring him over here. I might bounce around here a little bit. This might get loud on my mic because of where it's at. Okay. I might pick up here a little bit, make sure he can stand there. Alright, just do this kind of stuff. Now. I'm going to take my McCarty make sure I put my hand underneath it, just my arm underneath it like that. Okay, so if I do, for whatever reason, if all of a sudden he gets stupid when I go to get on, I have this with me, you know, I, I can easily grab this. If I have to jump off real quick, I have this. If it's here, one, I can get tangled up in it, okay, two, I have to find it. If I just keep it draped over my arm like this, and I have to get off quick, for any reason, I can do it. Thank you, buddy. Okay. The fact that he followed me there, even though he came into me, but I kind of accidentally, well, not accidentally, but I was demonstrating, I pulled him towards me. So he took that step. I'm going to allow that because that's exactly what I asked for. I'm going to get my reins here, get them together, put my foot in the stirrup, hand over on the other side of the pommel, and I'm going to wait here until I'm sure he's kind of calm. I'm going to step up here. So I'm going to wait. He thinks he needs to go somewhere. He don't. Put my foot in the stirrup. 
Now, I do not want him to step off. We're gonna stand here and I'm gonna futz. Okay, and he's gonna jiggle around here. We did this for an hour yesterday, okay? And he got better. And I'll probably be, I'm not gonna do it that long today for the video, but after the video, I'll probably revisit it. I'm just gonna sit up here. Maybe when I get on, oh, maybe my underwear got bunched up and I need to fix it, okay? Or maybe also my nose started running and I need to blow my nose, or, or maybe I'm working another horse. Although I wouldn't be working another horse probably off of him at this point. Um, he has to wait until I get myself together. I need to maybe put my, my lariat somewhere. Might need to adjust it. Maybe it was underneath here when I got on some, you know, things happen. Um, so I'm just going to wait here. And he just kind of has to hang out. I'm not going to hold him in place, but every time he moves, I'm going to make it harder for him that he's moving. Might reach down here and pet him. Now yesterday, every time I went to pet him or did anything, he's like, oh, time to go. No, I might just want to sit here and pet you. Maybe this is our lesson today, is I just sit here, think about life, and pet you occasionally. You know, whatever it is that I want to do, if I need to adjust, I need to push my saddle one way or the other, scratch my nose, fix my hat, itch my ear, whatever I need to do, he needs to wait. Now, every horse is different, okay? You have to understand the horse that you're working with, and this comes after hundreds and hundreds of horses or whatever. So some horses you're going to get on, and, you know, you could move them around a bit, and then they can stand still. But the problem is, is that horses like, like him and his mind frame, that's kind of what's happened. You get on, and, and they think that they have to do something. So if you just continue that, unless you make it really, really hard, but... I guarantee on a horse like him, just like on what my mare used to be, uh, you know, they, you can run them in a tight circle until they literally drop over dead. You know, you can run them around, yield them, futz around with them, whack them up in the head, and, you know, whatever you want to, not that I do that, but you, you, people do that. You know, whatever you, people do when they're trying to get their horse to stand still, um, or just get them moving so that they think they're going to tire that horse out, I guarantee you a horse like him, a horse like my mare, a lot of horses that I know, you ain't going to tire them out. They'll die first. I mean, you cannot possibly um, tire them out. So here, he's just going to have to learn, and this is way better than yesterday. He has to learn that when I get up on here, your first most important job is to wait. That waiting and and waiting for me and and talking to me kind of in that aspect is just as important as if we had to go out and do a job that's your first job wait for me it's a real job it's not sitting here and vegetate it's sit here and wait okay we're at a stoplight for gosh sakes you know i'd get a lot of people in the past and you know they'd be yelling at you know me or Oh, well, they almost never yelled directly at me because I don't know why, but they just never came up and talked to me about it. But they, you know, people would be watching me work somebody's horse. And so they'd later go to that owner and they'd say, all she does is stand in the middle of the arena and stand there on your horse for an hour. You know, what I might be doing is moving one foot. I might be helping them through something like this. You know, I'm doing something. I'm not just sitting here on my phone. Um, some horses, if they're really, you know, worried about me, I might take my attention kind of off of them, you know, look at doing something else. I'm still paying attention to them so that I can totally give them a little bit more of a break without actually walking away from them. But I'm not, I'm always doing something, even if we're just standing here. I'm doing something, okay? And I'll do this a couple more minutes here at the most because I know this is like watching paint dry. And all I do is I just kind of block him. Nothing specific. I'm not in any major position. But you see, he's just like, dude, I got to do something. I got to do something, you know? <laughs> I just want him to learn how to wait. So I'm just going to keep blocking him. And he gets, you know, anxious. And he thinks he has to move. Pretty soon, doing this every day, he'll realize he don't have to move. He can just kick back. And I can play with his ears and whatever I want to do, you know? reach back and touch his butt. Yesterday when I did that, we went somewhere. <laughs> so that's better. He thinks he has to pee. Now you'll probably watch, you know, he did this to me yesterday a few times. He, he goes to pee, but he doesn't drop fully and he won't fully pee. He, he's like, I have to pee, but he won't fully pee. He like pees a little bit 
And there's nothing wrong with him because he pees just fine in the stall when he's not doing this. He actually does this on his own too, um, at times. Uh, so, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong. He doesn't have beans, nothing like that. It's just, he's so uptight and so like this all the time that he doesn't even want to pee right. So he's going to spread out there. He's going to think he has to pee. And you'll probably see it'll kind of splash everywhere. He probably won't fully drop even if he does pee. And he won't finish peeing. He's just too worried about it. Okay. There you go. Even though he's spread out there, he started to exhale. There he goes to pee a little bit. See, now he's shaking there like, like, like a leaf underneath me. Because he's not sure. He's actually peeing a lot better today than he did yesterday. He peed like three times or something. Just those little bits. But he's actually shaking. There he goes. Okay. Now sometimes when a horse is done peeing, they, they want to step off of their pee. And I understand that part, but I mean, he's been doing this the whole time. All right, well, I was just making noises. I'm not talking to you. Okay. Hang in there. So I'm going to hold him and then here. Hold him and then here. And I'm going to be relaxed in the middle. He's bouncing all over Tarnation. And I'm going to be relaxed. I'm not going to sit here and do this. Okay, that's not going to help. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, don't step on the cone, buddy. Okay. Now, for sake that we're doing this on the video here, and take them kind of a little bit to the middle of these cones if I have some sort of control. Okay. Now, I've done a lot of the yielding and stuff like that with them uh, on the ground. We're going to start this today under saddle. Okay. As soon as he can learn to stand still. I'm not asking him to yield yet. He's just futzing around, and I might have to do this a little bit different. I might have to walk him first. All right, I'm not asking him to yield. I'm just wait, waiting, waiting, waiting. See, he's just anxious. All right, there he step. Well, almost stop for a second. Block him. Quarter, quarter, quarter. Meaning, I take my reins out, kind of to a quarter to the side help him find that middle. I want him to find my middle. I want him comfortable in his skin. I want him to get in the middle of his skin and not jumping all over it. Like a freaking little jumping bean. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna put my left leg back. He's not quite ready yet. I'm gonna put my left leg back. Because I know he sure ain't gonna be listening to my ab, but my ab already went. You know when I yield my hind quarters I ask with my ab and then my hip and then my thigh and then my calf. Okay so he's all over the place and I want him to plant that left front foot. Easy, buddy. We're gonna run into the cones. We're doing everything, but my left leg is still on there. My left hand is still asking for that. There. Thank you very much, sweetheart. That's all I wanted. Now I'm gonna use these cone patterns. Okay. Now, when I have a horse like this, I'm gonna get real short on my reins. I'm gonna get my hands out in front of me. My butt's gonna stay down in the saddle. I might be out of the vision there. Okay. Sorry, I'll get back in if I am. I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> okay, so I usually do this stuff in the round pen, so I know I'm, where I'm at. Okay, so I'm going to get my hands way out in front of me. I'm going to create that triangle. My butt is down, but my hands are kind of forward. And my weight is still down in the center, but I'm kind of forward directing up here. Okay, he's not anywhere near ready for collection. He has no mind for a collection right now. Okay, we're going to go straight. He's going to be wiggling all over Tarnation. You're going to see me every which way but straight. Okay. My butt's still down. Now when I make my turn, my whole body turns and I look. I'm going to help him try and find center without him worrying. I'm going to the left. He's blocking into my right. And then I go straight. Okay, and I just finished, well not finished, but made a lot of progress to going home tomorrow. Another horse that was very, very similar to this, just worried as all get out about everything, thinking everything had to be going somewhere. Okay, just relax. I'm just going to get particular in my pattern here. And I'll use patterns on horses like this instead of just meandering. Okay, cones are for, for the person, not for the horse. Look to the left, look here, my butt's still down. Where, where people go wrong here, as soon as I'm sure I'm back in the camera, I'll show you. Hopefully I, he doesn't do anything too stupid when I do it. 
Okay. What they'll do is they'll kind of come up here and they'll sit on the front of their crotch and they'll kind of squeeze their legs and they'll be out here like this. No, I'm still here. This would look no different. My butt would look no different than if I'm in a very proper position. He's going to go sideways there. Now he really doesn't know what to do. Okay, so my butt, everything still stays there. My back is still there. I'm just out here with my hands making a very clear path. All I'm trying to do is find his mind. This guy has been riding for a long time. Riding is not his issue. His mind is his issue. Okay? Off to the left. All right? My butt's still down. Now, I'm going to freeze my body, ask him to stop. That's actually quite a lot of weight there on those reins. Okay. Now, because he wanted to go to the right, or, you know, right leg, so his hind quarter to the left, I'm going to ask him for that left again. I'm going to put my left leg back. So when I come to the middle here, I'm going to ask for a yield. I'm asking. I'm trying to get that front end to stay planted, but I have to block it and find the balance, find the balance, find the balance, find the balance. My left leg is back, but not too hard because he's probably, you know, thinking kick to go kind of thing. And I'm going to teach him. There he goes. That was good. A little bit of a yield. And go back to what we were doing. Hands out in front of me. Triangle. Okay, keep his triangle there, and here, go. My butt's still down, so if he does something, hopefully I can stay with him, because I'm, my center of gravity, my balance is down and with him. All right, I'm centered. I want him to learn how to stay in between me. Again, there's a whole bunch of different ways, but what his problem is, is the same as I get with a lot of them. They just don't know what to do. So they just think they have to do something. Okay. I'm going to come around here. Now this next time I go in the middle, I'm going to ask for a yield again. I want him to learn how to yield his hind and his front. I'm going to allow him to move his feet here and there anyway, in between. Now I'm going to ask for that stop. I freeze my body. And he doesn't know what to do, so he goes everywhere. Now my left leg is back. And that pivoted, and that was much better. Thank you, sweetheart. Give him a little bit of a pet. Now, I'm not going to throw it all away there, because then we'll just be chasing him all over town. Okay, but I gave him a little pet. Let him know that's what I wanted. Here he's fading way out to the left. I just maintain my position. Then I come through here. Come in the center. Ask for that. Oh. Okay. Now, a horse like him, the last thing I'm going to do, and you've heard this on my colt starting, Last thing I'm going to do is walk forward out of a stop. I'm going to do some sort of a yield. He doesn't have a whole lot of knowledge yet. So I'm just going to keep doing the same yield. Because his tendency is to throw his hip to the, to the left, I'm going to do my left leg instead and throw his hip to the right. Wait until he gets there. There he goes. We lined ourselves up with another cone and back through. Let him know what I want to do. The clearer I get in all this stuff, the more it's going to help him, okay? And I'm going to be doing this every freaking day and just building on it as he can. Come to a stop. I freeze. I hold, okay? Wait for him. Left leg back. Plant that left front. I block it. I don't want to use the rein to yield his hind quarter. I want him to understand. But my reins will come into play to help that front end, okay? Hopefully, you know, maybe the next video or two videos I can show you, but you've seen that before. I've explained that on other videos. I can't do too much, otherwise I'll freak him out at this point. One day it won't bother him at all. Right now I'm not going to set it up for total failure. Okay, go through here. And this is just about very, very basic. The ABC, the big letter one letter per page type of foundation. This is nothing spectacular. This is what every horse should know. There he kind of overshot it, but I'm still going that way. I create my triangle. Okay. And there's often times that he has, he's like pulling on my reins pretty good here. He's pushing on my right leg there. I'm not going to go berserky on him. I'm not going to start kicking him and whacking him. That's not going to help him at all. You know, will I scare him? Yeah. Will I have to fix it later? Yeah. So, I'm going to sit here 
and just help him find the middle. Let him realize that there's a much better place to be. See there he kind of came with me just a little bit and I softened up. There. He thought about it for a minute. Good. And then I, I reward him for that. Yield that hind horn. And again, I do not walk forward out of a stop when I have a horse like this. Oh, that's just asking for more trouble. Always make a change until he is balanced. Forward, backward, left, right, up, down. And every corner in between circles, er until everything's balanced, I will not walk a horse out of a stop. Barring, you know, sometimes if I'm teaching or something and I'm on, on a horse, I might, you know, end up doing that just because I'm teaching. I don't use too many horses as my teacher's pets. <laughs> okay. See, he's starting to come with me. If I do this, it gets better. If every time I, I get on him, he just thinks he has to go first, and maybe one day he'll settle down, you know, after a while. That it actually makes it longer. This, you know, tomorrow it'll take less time. Like when I started actually riding him, just right now, today, that took an hour yesterday to get just to that point where that would even have been a thought because he was bouncing around so much because all I wanted him to do was stand still he didn't know what I wanted so he just kept guessing you don't want the horse to keep guessing okay anxiety and then when when horses get anxiety you'll see a lot of horses you know their back will get kind of swayed they won't be able to develop their muscles correctly they'll have a a bad top line, they'll have a bad butt, they'll have that little bitty skinny front end, you know, the, in between their chest that looks like a little, you know, pole or something like that. And it's, it's all because they're too, too much anxiety in their brain that they can't think. When they can't think, they can't possibly use their body correctly. So they actually atrophy their muscles or they build them incorrectly because they're too anxious. They, they can't think. You cannot be an athlete and be worried about life. Okay? It don't work. Alright? There, I'm gonna... Now again, I'm kind of here. I'm not here all the time. So you'll see that sometimes. There we go. That's a good boy. Help him stay there. Help him stay there. He thinks he has to go somewhere. Help him stay there. There. Sit. Alright. He doesn't have to focus over there. Sit up a little bit. Ask him to walk. Okay. Ask him to back a couple steps. Okay. Bring his front end over. Just a little tiny bit, even though he's not quite ready for that yet. Okay. And then I'm going to help him find a place to sit still. Maybe. And he might not get fully still yet today, but by the end of the week, he will be. See if I can find a place, get my myself ready, my McCarty ready. Okay. Step up. Step down. I have my McCarty if I need it. Thank you very much, son. Wait for him. Here, I'm not going to just walk off. <laughs> okay. He's going to stand here and wait with me for a second. Okay, and now at this point, maybe I'll pick up here, and maybe I'll just yield his hind quarter. Okay, and then I'll pet him. I'm not going to just be done. I'm not going to get off and just go put him, put him away. Excuse me. Help him stay there. Maybe I'm going to yield this hind quarter. Again, just like with all my stuff, he overbends here because he's still learning, but it's better than it was. And wait. Hang in there, son. Good. Help him find a spot. So again, for the video, it wasn't the full length that I will be doing here with him. But it, it's something that I can show you so that you can see the progress of when you start explaining things to a horse. 
on how to adjust their weight, on how to plant a foot, on how to stay with you, on how to just not worry about life because you all got it together. You know, how much change it makes. Okay, so we'll see here pretty soon. Well, pretty soon, I mean in a week or so. I'll see if I can set up again and you'll see the difference. It won't be perfect in a week, but you should see quite a bit of progress. Two weeks you'll see more progress, three weeks, etc., etc. And then we'll just keep adding more and more stuff in. Okay, all right, buddy. There you go. I know. So always, when when a horse is this anxious, you know, I'll, I'll kind of let them take that step without, you know, coming unglued on them. Okay, all he's doing is looking for some security, and that's what we're doing for today. Okay, and that's it. And we'll see you in about a week or so.